Hello guys and welcome to the new series Gym with James. This is a new series that I'm going to be starting on YouTube and the idea is I'm going to take you guys around with me for all my workouts, my personal workouts, how I train, how I build muscle, all the things that I do within that space and at the same time going to run through just some like little tips as we go along just to kind of get you guys like properly clued up so you can go away and train as optimally as possible. So today we are going to be training uh, legs, oof, shoulders and biceps and I'll tell you why I'm doing those three together as we go through this workout um, but I'm excited to get started. This is going to be the first one. As always we are going to do a warm up because that's probably the most important part of the whole workout to be honest that you shouldn't neglect and then we're going to get straight into the workout starting off with some legs. Alrighty. Alright nice. Warm up done let's get into it. This is the cool part about this gym right they've got their own leg day area so up here is where all of the leg equipment is. I've just seen that the hack squat is free. Today's first weapon of choice, hack squat. So I use uh, my coach James Club app for all my sessions. So you can see here I've got all my sessions lined up for the week. Um, today is legs, shoulders, biceps, abs if we have time. Um, so I've got all my exercises lined up here. And then when I go on to them, you've got uh, all the demos, <coughs> just if you need to see how you do them, um, all the details, etc. So if I click start workout, you can see what I did last time, like a warm up set, and then I built up the weight. So in today's session, I'm gonna look to go probably a little bit heavier uh, on this, and probably go up to maybe like 275 pounds, maybe 280 pounds depending if the pre-workout kicks in or not. Ever since I've started tracking my weight um, and started actually like logging the progress I've been making, you can actually like see your progress is just like insane. Like progressive overload, all that stuff is incredible. Today's gonna be a sweaty workout. <laughs> okay, so yeah, warm up set. As you can see, there's not much weight on here. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just gradually build up. And this is with all exercises, um, especially with the first exercise that you do on a, on a body part, so legs. I'm just gonna slowly build this up, build the weight. Again, it's mainly just like to prevent injury, but it's also just to get your muscle fibers ready for the load that's about to, to go on. Perfect. pre-workout if I'm training in the morning so it's about 11 o'clock in the morning at the moment um, one scoop in here is enough to send you crazy so don't overdo it yeah I don't try and depend on pre-workout like I'm quite sensitive to caffeine so it hits me pretty hard if I'm training in the afternoon I won't take pre-workout because then, then I don't sleep at night but this stuff just gives you that extra kick okay so this is the first working set I'm gonna go for about six reps see how we feel squatting with a with a bar um, but then got slightly injured because my body was loading one side so hack squats just a really like safe way to build up quads um, again machines are fantastic people knock machines a lot but machines are great if you want to just practice like safe exercises target specific muscle groups so don't be afraid of using machines no matter how advanced you are okay so we're gonna go on to the shoulders now. Um, I always like to get legs done first just because it's the biggest muscle group in your body and it's the hardest and requires the most amount of energy. That's why we did the hack squats first. But now, I'm just gonna do very simple shoulder press, dumbbells. I really like this exercise because it's good if you've got shoulder issues, it's like healthy in terms of like where your elbows are and stuff. Um, but if you wanna grow your shoulders, 
you want to be pressing a lot of weight over your head. That's how you're going to get the most amount of growth. So don't be afraid to go heavy with this. As always, I'm going to warm up my rotator cuffs, do a few warm up exercises, and then we'll get into shoulder press. than in the UK is all the guys and sometimes ladies walk around with pump covers on so you wait until you get pumped up this is just what I've been told so I'm just following suit and then you take it off and you're all vascular and muscular and everyone's like Fuck. look at the size of him but it doesn't quite work so I'm not actually like massive massive compared to some dudes there. but I do have a pump cover on and it's about to come off this is this is the part of the workout where shit gets real serious all right definitely harder breathing through your nose and only breathing through your nose when you train and like it's not something that you're meant to do or you have to do but I've just been reading a lot more about how important it is to breathe in, in the majority of situations for your nose obviously when you're like tired you need to exhale a lot of uh, carbon dioxide you need your mouth to push it out like now that I'm doing it but I just tried to do that set just breathing through my nose it made it a lot harder. That, that's when you're kind of talking about like optimal, optimal performance. Like it's not a necessity, it's just something that's quite interesting. So second leg exercise. One that actually is not that like common, but I started incorporating it into my training um, and doing unilateral work, which means you're working like one leg or arm at a time. Um, the benefits of doing this is it really helps any imbalances that you have in your body. And it's really good for coordination um, and balance and working like single for example like single leg just like one at a time it's great if you're a runner it's great for just improving like you know, if you think about it when you're walking or when you're running you're always on one leg and then another leg right so if you want to practice weight training and doing single leg stuff it's only going to help your um, yeah like I said your overall balance so I've been really enjoying doing single leg work this exercise is like a little twist. It's a Bulgarian split squat, so they're horrendous. Holding a kettlebell down by the side and then driving up like this. And I'll show you guys, but it's also really good for working your core. So give this exercise a try if you haven't done it and it will change your leg strength. It might make you cry though, so that is the only downside, but that's if you want to just, you know, take the risk. I do. stuff or you're doing single arm stuff you always want to start with your weaker side first the reason being is because if let's say I can only do 10 reps on my weak side my right side in my case is my stronger leg then I will just match the weaker side if you start with your stronger side if you do 12 reps and then you go onto your weaker side and you can't do 12 reps you can only do 10 eventually those will add up and you'll just be a lot stronger on one side or the other so Generally, always start with your weaker side first. It also, you have more energy, right, at the start of your set. When you're tired and you've got your stronger leg left, mentally, it just makes it easier. This is where I just don't know how people do a full leg day. I've done two leg exercises. I'm absolutely fooked. Maybe it's just because I'm unfit, I don't know. I've never used one of those before. First time in this gym. Love it. Such a good uh, one for lateral raises if you don't want to use dumbbells. Normally I use dumbbells, but this just looks cooler, you know, so that's what it's about. I'm going to bring the bench over here. So if you ever want to increase the weight on a machine, here it's like uh, it jumps from 22 and a half or 50 to 60 right if you don't want to make that jump like I don't you can get one of these put it in like this and 
And there you go. Genius. You're welcome. Get your rest time as well. So try and stick to your rest time as much as possible. This one, I've only got rest for a minute 30, but I'll probably increase that to two minutes just because I'm feeling a bit tired with the legs, always the legs. Um, but it's really crucial that you have enough rest time in between your sets, but you're also not resting for too long. If you're on your phone and you're on TikTok or social media, those minutes fly by. And if you're resting four or five minutes between every set, the intensity is not gonna be there. So you wanna get a good medium. Generally speaking, anywhere between a minute and a half, two minutes to three, three and a half minutes is good. If you're going like super heavy weight and you're really just going for strength, then you can rest four minutes, maybe even five if you're just doing like two, three reps and power is your thing. But generally speaking, you wanna try and stay on top of your rest time because it really makes an impact with your recovery, but also your performance in the workout. why I train biceps not on a pull day like usually if you're doing your back and you're doing lots of pulling exercises people generally will do their biceps as well um, the reason I stopped doing that is because I was actually overusing my biceps I ended up getting like a little bit of a niggle in my tendon down here um, so now I train biceps separately so they're not super fatigued when I do them um, which is also why I will always spend a couple of minutes on warm-up sets just getting them nice and warm and again that's just an example of just because you know one type of training works for someone it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you like so for example for me I now don't do biceps with my pool session whereas most people do but that's because it suits me and my body and the way I train which is another reason why you don't just follow random workouts on Instagram and on the internet because they might not be the right thing for you. That's why getting something tailored to you is the best way you're gonna get results and the best way that you're not gonna get any type of injury that is potentially gonna stop you from training for a long time. Ish. When you're doing like um, a fixed bar, so like this, you wanna lean ever so slightly forward with your upper body and then bring your elbows ever so slightly forward so then you can get a full contraction. If you're back here, when you get tired and you start coming up like this, you're actually using more of the elbow to get it up and then you know your shoulders to help bring it in. So if you move forward ever so slightly, you'll see now that like, my biceps are doing like, the entire, well, all of the work in this movement, which just makes it harder. The best feeling in the world is having an arm pump not quite the best feeling I can think of more better feelings than that um, but I do love an arm pump when you're out there like all like rock hard and pumping all right guys so that was my session done it was about an hour an hour and 15 so that's usually the duration of my sessions as you can see it was just like very intense I didn't do a shitload of exercises the series is going to continue the next one we're doing I think is a, a chest back and triceps workout um, and yeah i'm excited for this I hope, I hope you guys have learned a lot let me know in the comments how you found it maybe i'm talking too much maybe you just want to see me working out maybe you want to hear more about you know exercise and techniques and stuff um, but if you did enjoy the video please like it please subscribe to my channel share it with your friends you know they may want to see some random english bloke training in an american gym see you in the next video thanks so much for watching